To some, this may just be a fish, but this little fellow has been getting some kind of attention. Found only in one small area of the world, rural central Texas, it lives in small spring-fed streams. In 1953, the fish hit the map. It was recognized as a unique, distinct species that occurred in only one area of the world. For a few years thereafter, the Guadalupe bass lived a quiet life, occasionally ending up on the end of a hook, but for the most part, he or she just blended in with its native surroundings. In the 1970s and 80s, a crisis hit that will wipe out the pure native species if measures are not taken. Smallmouth bass were being introduced into the Hill Country River system as an added sport fish. Little did biologists know what would soon follow. Hybridization was discovered between the two fish, and in some cases, hybridization rates were as high as 50%. Something had to be done. Dr. Gary Garrett is a biologist at the Texas Parks and Wildlife's Heart of the Hills Fisheries Science Center, currently working on the problem. He is an expert on the species. What we're doing here on the research uh, facility is we raise pure, uh, genetically verified Guadalupe bass. We raise anywhere from 50 to 100,000 young a year and stock them here in Johnson Creek, which is one of the three major branches of the Guadalupe River. Each year we do that. The uh, following year we go out and we collect fish from the stream to, and, and genetically uh, test those to see what we've got. We've seen that over time we actually are reducing the number of hybrids down to, in Johnson Creek, it's down to, uh, in this upper end, about 3 to 5 percent. So we actually are making some headway. It's, it's a long haul, but it's enough of success, enough progress, that we're going to go ahead and, and spread that program out, at least that's our intention, spread it out to the North Fork and South Fork of the Guadalupe River, try to then just move the, the hybrid swarm on downstream off the plateau. The, the habitat of the fish, uh, as I said, it's, it's adapted for the hill country of Texas. It, the, the native basses of the hill country on the Edwards Plateau are largemouth and Guadalupe bass. They both live in these streams and they're both specialized for different portions of the stream. Uh, probably the easiest way for the public to envision where they live is if you go inner tubing in one of our streams, which is quite popular. When you're in that inner tube and you're, you're having to paddle a whole lot because you're in the deep open waters, that's largemouth bass habitat. The waters you're looking for when you're in that tube are the fast flowing rapids, those, those fast runs, that's where Guadalupe bass live. That's how the two bass divide up their habitat. So the largemouth bass can get really big, it lurks and, and uh, preys on a, a variety of fishes and, and uh, insects and crustaceans that live there. The Guadalupe bass lives out in that fast water. Now what it does in that fast water it's not dumb, it's not sitting out there burning up its energy trying to hold its place in the rapids all day long. It actually sits behind uh, rocks, stumps, any, of, any obstructions in that water. It sits out of the current in that water, in that part of the water, and watches for things to come floating down the stream. As it sees a, a minnow struggling in the current or a crayfish or something of that nature, it will dart out, hit its prey, and then slide over back behind another obstruction to to uh, maintain its place in the water. And that's what it does all day long. It, it just works those, the fast waters. To distinguish the Guadalupe bass from the largemouth bass, primarily uh, the first things that hit you are the lateral stripe 
which it's got a lateral bar, a lateral line, stripe, like largemouth, but their stripe is made up of vertical bars, often diamond shaped. Another biggie that's easy to see is that belly. It's not a white belly like in a largemouth bass, it's actually got stripes on the belly. Spotted bass also have that, except theirs are actually rows of spots. And then, again, one of the big differences is that mouth. The mouth, the upper jaw does not extend beyond the back of the eye. So no, consequently a bit smaller mouth. Still opens quite large. It can, it can take some pretty large prey items itself. But one of the issues that, that affects Guadalupe bass as well as, as all of our aquatic resources, the Guadalupe bass are just one of our indicator species, uh, is reductions in, in quantity of water. Uh, there's, there's a certain amount of water in an aquifer. There is, certainly is recharge to aquifers, but there's also discharge from aquifers, uh, natural discharges through springs, which create all of our streams. And then the, uh, the artificial discharges, and that is from pumping uh, for industrial and municipal use. As populations continue to grow and, and uh, impact the quantity of water in those aquifers, we have less water in the streams themselves that's available for our natural resources. Guadalupe bass uh, would be one of the first affected because they do need that flowing, uh, healthy, high quality water. Uh, as I say, though, there's a lot of other aquatic resources that would be equally be affected. The history of the Guadalupe bass, uh, as far as humans are concerned, started in 1953. That's when, when humans recognized that it actually was a, a unique species. Uh, my major professor, Dr. Clark Hubbs at, U at the University of Texas, is the one that discovered it in 1953, coincidentally the year I was born. So we, we've known about this fish for a while. Uh, it, uh, was recognized as a unique, specialized fish for uh, the Edwards Plateau. And it's done well over time until uh, in the 70s and 80s when smallmouth bass were brought into Texas uh, with the thoughts of adding an additional sport fish for Texas fishermen. The problem is the Guadalupe bass and smallmouth bass can't really tell each other apart and they live in the same environments. Uh, as a result, they hybridize. Some studies we did about uh, 10 or 15 years ago, and we continue through today, uh, looking at this hybridization problem has shown that anywhere from 30 to 50% of the Guadalupe bass in many of our locations are hybrids. They're not even pure fish anymore. Uh, of course, the problem with hybrids uh, is primarily that that is not, the hybrid now does not have all the unique specializations that the pure fish had to, uh, to survive over the long haul in these environments. So we're quite concerned about that. We don't want to lose our, our state fish, our unique fish. Uh, smallmouth bass are a lot of fun to fish for, certainly, but we just uh, would like for that not to take place in the, in the hill country. Uh, Guadalupe bass, uh, on their own, are a wonderful sport fish, highly popular with a large number of uh, people that like to fish in rivers. Uh, uh, the way I look at it, uh, and as I've told a lot of fishermen, fishing groups, uh, one of the great things about Guadalupe bass is you really can't catch a Guadalupe bass in an ugly place. When you're fishing for Guadalupes, you're in a, a beautiful location. Uh, they're similar uh, in many regards to uh, what trout uh, fishermen look for. They're not really looking for a lot of pounds of meat. They're looking for the aesthetic experience of being in a beautiful location, as well as the challenge of, of tracking down these fast water fish and, and uh, attracting them to their, the lure of the day.